Tell this once and for all, Dr. Basu, because, you know, you keep emphasizing what you believe social polar polarization, as you see it, will do to economic growth. Do you want to quickly respond to that and yes. then we'll move on? Yeah, you know, I'm not saying this is certainly going to cause India's growth to tank because we may begin to correct ourselves. And when Arvind is talking about evidence, the trouble is we are looking into the future. So I'm not giving evidence into the future, nor is he giving evidence into the future because that's not possible to give. Mm -hmm. But these things about trust and breakdown of growth there are cross-country studies, there are laboratory studies that groups that trust one another begin to do better and it stands to reason. Mm -hmm. So that does worry me. But I am still, as I say, that I think India has strong fundamentals. It had higher education, which was very strong. It has an entrepreneurial class, which is very strong and a lot of skill. If we can begin to make corrections, yes, India could grow. But these forecasts, the IMF, World Bank, I've sat in one of those and done it when you're talking about something two years later. Mm -hmm. This is really, again, without evidence, you're doing pen on paper, a couple of things. And one more thing I will point out, mm -hmm. that the base effect is not gone, even if next year the growth is 8%. It's having been, yes, 6.6, .6, say 8 point, minus 6.6, .6, mm -hmm. 8.9, still it's very tiny growth over a two year period. So on the trajectory, that, India went flat, okay. and then it picks up. So again, if you draw a straight line, I can do this all on television. It's not such a huge growth because we are still climbing out of one of the biggest. I, India's growth drop during the COVID is one of the worst performance in the world. Can I, so we can are climbing I, can I stop up, you? and that oh, I disagree with that. I disagree with that. Number possible. of countries actually declined as much as India did or more. Number during COVID. You're saying during COVID. I've written about that. I don't have the numbers in front of me right now. But, but that is a false uh, claim. So you're saying during COVID, a number of countries declined. Don't just look at India's decline. You're looking at it as a global decline. Am I correct, Dr. Panagriya? Yes. Yes. Can I, yes, I am saying that. Can I, though, push both of you on a concern that many people have, rising inequality? Again, this is not something that didn't exist pre-2014, but the fact is when you see a certain concentration of wealth at times, Dr. Panagriya, when you see the inequality reports that emerge, the top 10% accounting for more than 60% of incomes. Does that worry you that while we grow, there is also an element of cronyism settling in? You re refer to various reforms like the insolvency and bankruptcy code, all positive. But there's also a concern of monopolization and cronyism that is emerging in our economy. Does that worry you at all? So my, my take always on this, Rajdeep, has been that for a developing country, poverty problem trumps the inequality problem. At the end of the day, poverty is something about which I can do something. But uh, inequality, there's a lot of, lot of intellectual discussion, including international inequality and all. But give me one instance uh, where actually inequality has been act, uh, massively kind of tackled. So you're, so you're saying, so you're saying, Dr. Panagriya, poverty levels have declined in the last eight years. There is an IMF report that seems to now suggest it. The government's uh, uh, attempt to provide welfare benefits, free ration during COVID being an example, helps to offset possibly the uh, difficulties that people face. You've got the Krishi Samman Yojana. You believe these schemes work. Am I correct? You don't see them as well, doles. You see they, them as direct benefits. They, no, no, they, they definitely do help. But to me, much more important is the fact that the country has grown. Mm -hmm. I, I think we, uh, when, when the country grows rapidly, these uh, transfers can also grow with it. It's, so not it's, trickle down, it's not trickle down economics again, which many people see. It's pull up effect. It's, it's a pull-up effect, you know. Gro growth is an engine that works very effectively in bringing people up. Uh, and, and at least up to 11, 12, the evidence is very clear, actually. You know, not only growth uh, help the poor in general, but every single group. Right. If you look at scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, uh, 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 Hindus, Muslims, Danes, Sikhs, every single group. I have done the numbers myself, actually, so I can tell 11, 12. Uh, 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 speak with full confidence that poverty declined significantly in every one of those groups. But would it be right to say, Dr. Basu, that poverty has declined? Would I be able to find a consensus that both between 2004 and 14, when there was the UPA government, and now in the last eight years, there is, because of the kind of growth that we've seen in most years in this period, a significant decline in poverty reduction? Can you give credit I to both governments? Possible? I would give credit to both governments because if you look at just poverty, 
all the way from about 2001, 2002, poverty has been declining fairly steadily. So I don't know whether I'll give credit to both government or credit to neither government. Mm -hmm. But on this, I wouldn't distinguish between the two. One disagreement with Arvind, I will point out, this is not really in terms of economic analysis, but a normative position. For me, mm -hmm. I agree with him. The most fundamental challenge in a society is poverty. And to that extent, we feel that it's going in the right direction. The COVID period has been a challenge for everyone. I'm not mm -hmm. talking about that. But I am also concerned about inequality and cronyism. I don't think you can dismiss that. This is a global problem. And you have to at least be aware of that. The level of inequality in the world today, and this is not a question of my country or that country or this government or that government. Inequality in the world today is shockingly high. So yes, poverty is the biggest challenge, but inequality and cronyism is something, if we look away from that, you are going to, in the long run, damage democracy, people's rights, people's space. So inequality is something that the best minds in the world right. need to get together. And fortunately, one thing you do see in the United States and even a few in India, where some of the richest people say that I feel good, I've become so rich. But this is a problem when so few people become so rich and so many remain poor. When I hear even some of the super rich join in in this debate, I feel a little bit of hope that there are at least people like me who are troubled about the level of inequality and cronyism that we are seeing.